awesome segment with Dave and Shane backstage. Shane was walking to the ring, trying to act fearless, and Dave came up and said, Brother, I'm sorry I blew it out there. I I, I just I screwed up. I'm so sorry. Shane's like, that's eh, no big deal. Uh, he keeps walking. But he's like, hey, but don't worry, brother. At the pay-per-view, I'm going to beat Randy Orton and take the title. I'm going to bring that title back home. <laughs> Shane and Shane just paused, looked at him for a second, and then kept walking. <laughs> Thought to himself, that's great. I'll enjoy watching that from my hospital bed. Yes. Yes. It was so awesome, too, because there was a point where, as Dave just said, he was sorry for the 14th time. And uh, he said, I-, I wish I was out there for you. And Shane muttered, and Dave was still talking, so I'm sure most people missed it, but Shane muttered, I wasn't counting on you being out there anyway. So Shane's already kind of figured out where Dave is going, but now there's nothing he can do about it. So, yeah, this segment was awesome, particularly when, when Dave tried to reassure him that everything was going to be, be okay, because in the end, he will be world champion, and that's all Shane could possibly want. We had Shane against Legacy. Infuriating. <laughs> Shane got... He just beat on them for a Shane while. Shane was destroying these men. Shane was beating up all three members of Legacy. And, by the way, fighting one-on-three and overcoming the odds, he still managed to get no heat. Note to WWE. It's the boss's son. We all know that. Yes. He's not tough. Okay? His... What can even be said here? It's funny because... I mean, it makes me mad because... Let's just pretend for a sec that Shane isn't fucking Vince McMahon's kid. Would a guy like this ever have a character of this badass tough guy? No. For of course not. Fuck sake. He at was, least get some gear. He was at like, least get some MMA gloves and some fucking board shorts or something. Yes. Yeah, he, He's he, out there in his fucking tennis shoes, these stupid ass wind pants, and this fucking jersey. Mm-hmm. And he's supposed to be a tough badass and is not afraid to face three men. He's like the announcers Terminator. are going crazy about, man. Nobody, who is who is this tough to go out there and just face three men like this? It should be all your fucking wrestlers! Yes. Not the son of the boss! Yes. God, this just made me so mad. And he goes out there, his hair is gray, he's a little bit fat, he's not very good. I mean, God bless the guy and all, but I'm just, if Shane McMahon is listening right now, if anybody from WWE is listening, look at this from the perspective of a casual fan. A casual wrestling fan is supposed to look at you, the 40, you're not even 40, late 30s, gray hair, a little fat, in his fucking tennis shoes, wind pants, and a jersey. Your average fan is supposed to look at that guy and go, yes, I believe he's beating up all three members of Legacy. That's what we're supposed to fucking believe. Yeah. No. No. Do something. Shave your fucking head. Get some tattoos. Do something so you at least pretend to look tough. Indeed. It, it, it's funny because there are times where I'll watch Shane, and, and Shane's no good, but every once in a while he will show flashes of athleticism that make you think, you know, if he had started training at age 20 and stuck with it, he probably would be pretty good by now. And there are times like this match where I think, this guy has grown up in this business and still has no clue how to do anything. And specifically, I'm thinking here, he was fighting one-on-three, and they cut him off and went to work, and then he fought back and was destroying all three men, and was doing it, and he looked bored. He has negative babyface fire. He's devoid of charisma at times. Well, I I think it's because he gets so tired. He also was gassed. That that was part of it, too. He was gassed a minute in. Uh, That that did not help. But yes, he he was beating up these three men and, and and like I say he looked completely bored with the entire operation like it was it was all just a waste of his time and he's the only guy I can imagine who could fight back one on three and not get a reaction for it so it was just a, a, an, an amazing sight to see it took forever too it was a I'm very- sure Shane McMahon loves this business and I, I know from talking to people that know Shane that he's a really nice guy that's all great okay but this is ridiculous this is just ridiculous. How many guys, how many guys at a WWE tryout that came in looking like Shane would even get a second glance? Exactly zero. Zero of them. Zero of them. I we we fucking give this speech to guys at Buddy Wayne's wrestling school. Look at the guys in WWE. Look at the guys, not even the fucking main eventers. Look at your average guys in WWE. You gotta try to look like that. Look at that. You, that's what you gotta try and do to get even a second look. 
Dolph Ziggler. Look at fucking Dolph Ziggler. Shane McMahon, Shane McMahon should be setting some sort of example for these guys. And not the example of, I'll jump off the fucking top rope and go through a table to show you how tough I am, that I'm one of the boys. No, go out there and do something. Do something to make people maybe believe that you could possibly be a tough guy. Because right now, there you've got nothing going for you in the tough guy category. You don't have the look. You don't have the physique. You don't have the athleticism. You, you the can't offense. work to that no. level. Your punches are horrible unless you punch the guy right in the face. By the way, there was a moment in this match. I don't know if he actually punched him, but it looked like he fucking tagged Orton. And Orton immediately tagged out, yes. ran around the ring, and ran halfway up the ramp with his hands on his hip and his head down. I thought he was going to walk all the way through the curtain and just be done. <laughs> if this would have been an indie show, if this were Buddy Wade, that's exactly what he would have done. But Orton ended up coming back there, so the guy's a trooper. But Jesus Christ, when they broke this guy's leg at the end of the thing, I could have sworn they broke both of his legs. <laughs> they put his head in there. I, I think they, I think they, I don't know if they switched legs or they were supposed to do both legs or they forgot what leg or I was, it doesn't matter. When they broke this guy's leg, it was like, this is supposed to be a heel move. I'm cheering. Yeah. Get this guy off my television. And more importantly, you're not the only one. And you know what? Message to Shane McMahon. You're off TV for a long time. You got your leg broken. Now's your chance to get a fucking makeover of some sort. Do something. Ricky fucking Steamboat is 56 years old and he's an agent. He was going to have a pay-per-view match. That motherfucker got in shape. He dyed his hair black. He tried to look like a pro wrestler. Shane McMahon looks more and more like a goofball frat boy every time he comes down to the ring. His wacky jerseys, oh, it just drives me crazy looking at this guy. I I got yelled at by Jim Cornette on one of the Wrestling Observer live shows when Jim Cornette found out that I wore khakis to the ring. He was fucking appalled. Khakis, he said. I immediately got gear. I immediately got gear. What is Shane McMahon's excuse? I don't know. What is uh, that's Shane McMahon's excuse for that fucking get-up and the gray hair and the whole nine yards? I don't understand. I, no one does, dude. No one does. I, I, <laughs> I guess Shane thinks he looks cool. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's dumb enough that he uses his own promotion as a, as a vanity toy to boost his own ego, uh, but he, he's not even going to try hard at that, so I don't know what to tell you. Grow your hair out or shave your hair off. Or dye your hair and grow it out. Or or something. Get some sort of, of athletic attire. Wear a mask. <laughs> no, that's, that's stupid. Come on, though. Seriously. Something. Even if you just got a pair of fucking boots. That would help. Something. There, there have been... A tan? That would also help. There have been dozens and dozens of wrestlers in this company. Uh, dozens. Hundreds and hundreds of wrestlers in this company over the past decade or so. I suspect all of them have had better gear than Shane. I saw a guy today, he was probably, he couldn't have been more than 15 years old. He had a purple mohawk. Okay? Okay. He was, he was kind of fat, but he was like, he was kind of fat all over. And I looked at him and I thought, this guy's got to be like on the football team or something at his school. I bet he's, I bet he's on the football team and he's probably a pretty scary fucking guy on the field. He's, he's kind of, he's, looks like he's... Very dangerous for a short time over a short distance. Yeah, powerful looking guy sure now look at shane geek it just he's I, he's a pta dad who happens to be doing main event pro wrestling shows that's bad though i know i mean i wouldn't even be so mad if like he came out and put up a fight and just got beat if he if he played the role that tommy dreamer plays yes i would be absolutely completely fine with shane mcmahon if he played the the tommy dreamer role but he doesn't. He plays the Steve Austin role. <laughs> yes. In what way does Shane McMahon resemble Steve Austin? They're both The white fact that men. he's got a cock, that's it. He has a gut. He's got four legs. He's got two arms. He has what? <laughs> <laughs> two legs. Whatever. He's anatomically similar to to Steve Austin. That's it. There's nothing else there that's even remotely the same. I've been ranting for too long. I'm going to play a fucking song here. Oh, sucked, everyone. And then we're going to do shout-outs and end. 